Welcome to another IndieX 2020 showcase. Tonight we have the pleasure of having with us Patricia Silva and Antonio Lopes. Antonio is the <laughs> lead artist and co-director of uh, Little Goody Two Shoes, and Patricia Silva is the writer and also co-director of uh, Little Goody Two Shoes. Um, and they are basically going to show us a bit of the game. We're going to talk a bit about the game today, and we'll also take some questions in the chat. If you have some questions for them, feel free to to leave them in the chat. So before we get into anything more serious, how are you guys? Everything okay? Hi, everything's <laughs> great. Thank you. Nice, yeah, we're nice. doing good. <laughs> good. I feel that you're always filled with energy, so that's already good. Uh, it's certainly a change of pace from the last stream, which was me alone, just talking to, about the game, basically. So it's always great to have devs, and I thank you for <laughs> taking a little bit of your time to show us your game, of course. I'll be the one playing, but you are the ones that made the game. You and a bunch of other very talented people. And for now, yeah, could you just give a small pitch on what, what you think about Little Good Issues, to, what, what it is, what the game is, what you want to give to the audience that is seeing the, the game right now? Mm, that's yeah, for the, sure. First of all, I'd just question. like to thank you for having us, because okay. it's a pleasure for us to be able to showcase our game in here, and I hope everyone watching has a great time watching us also. <laughs> so, EP, do you want to introduce the game? Yeah, like our um, go-to pitch is pretty much a um, little bit to shoot a role-playing adventure game with horror elements uh, set in a very fa fairy tale -ish, um setting. Uh, its theme is, you know, uh, cl clearly um, going for the fairy tales of our childhood. And um, overall, what we want to do with a uh, little bit to shoot is provide an experience that is more, it's more like a moving picture in the form of a game. So it's an overall experience, uh, visually, musically, the the story. We want to deliver the full package um, with the game, pretty much. Okay, very nice. Do you want to add anything, Antonio, or do you think that was a very good summation? Yeah, I can I can add a couple of things. You can add um, some. <laughs> just like a small introduction to our setting. This is set in a fictional village. Uh, set in Germany, which is called Kieferberg, literally the village of the pine tree. <laughs> and it follows the story of our main character, Elise, as you can see in our title screen. She's a very ambitious girl and she wants to become rich. And for that, she will have to um, avoid being suspicious, suspicious of witchcraft, which is the sole uh, goal of the game, to make uh, a sinister deal with a very obscure someone in the depths of the woods. And the game basically revolves about it and um, uh, f forming relationships with different characters, which will eventually lead to multiple endings and multiple uh, routes within um, the game story. Okay, very nice. I think, well, we should get to the thing that's most important right now, which is absolute with the game. <laughs> and so let's just jump right into it. Well, immediately when we open the game, we're immediately greeted with an amazing, let's say, splash screen. That's what I would call it. Because as you can see, you have <laughs> yeah. this fantastic background art. And that's one thing I immediately noticed about your Thank game you. is that uh, there's a huge amount of polish, uh, at least in all of the presentation oh. elements. And you've taken a great Thank care you. in this. And um, I have I had heard about you before because of our work with IndieX. You had been in PlayStation Talents last year, right, I think? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you were right next to us, so I had already heard about it, but I didn't know about Pocket Mirror. So uh, I think uh, you're already a team with some experience, right, in, uh, in this kind of games. Can you talk a bit about your experience in developing Pocket Mirror and oh. even other games that you have made? Well, you want to go, Kira? Yeah, sure. Um, Pocket Mirror is uh, an RPG Maker horror game. Well, it was a game made in RPG Maker, right? This time around, we are working with Unity, which is completely different than the whole new level for us, at least. <laughs> and while a Pocket Mirror is quite a lengthy game, around, I'd say, six hours of gameplay, eight maybe, uh, this time around, we are going for a more ambitious project, for sure. And it has been somewhat of a wild experience for everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's been very different, definitely. How many people work in uh, Astral Shift? Uh, so Ooh, currently we are the base, a lot. Um, yeah, the base team is five people. So it's uh, Kira, I, and I. Uh, we have two programmers and one uh, lead background artist. We are the 
I guess, five Portuguese people yeah, uh, in the Portuguese team. Game. Yeah, uh, all the other members are, you know, from the US, from Europe, from Japan. So we have like uh, a pretty extensive team outside of Portugal. Um, yeah, we are very lucky to be able to collaborate with people from all over the world. Yeah, definitely. From, for example, this, this cinematic injury you're seeing, it's drawn by a very talented girl named Jess. She has this very peculiar style that was already in our last game, Pocket Mirror. And we try to include this kind of visual uh, differences between styles. So you can see uh, this time around you're seeing something that resembles a child's book or a picture mm -hmm. book, right? To set the mood while you'll have various different art styles throughout the game um, with the backgrounds, with the pixel art characters. Um, that's the kind of experience we usually go for. And our team uh, usually works towards that goal. Yeah. So I'd say we are around 20 people. Um, <laughs> of course. Yeah. yeah, but of course, most of, most of us uh, that work uh, full time in this game um, it's just, yeah, uh, the five of us the plus, five. I'd say, three more artists that yeah, we are around seven people working full time in this full game. Full time, yeah. And we have collaboration with other members, uh, but more periodically. Okay, that's amazing. That's a really large team. But I mean, that that's very important, the, the thing that you mentioned about collaborating with different individuals that can bring different art styles and different aspects to the game development. And particularly for a game that it's more like a novel style game, like something of a visual novel, uh, art style and art direction are very, very important. And I'm glad to say that uh, just in this intro sequence alone, you've nailed it and, and blown past most people's expectations. I would say, at least visually, the game is amazing. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Thank you. So how long have you been developing this game? Oh, the uh, idea initially surfaced in 2016, I'd say. Mm -hmm. And throughout the year 2017 and 2018, we were developing the base concept of the game, uh, characters, the whole cast, um, the storyline, really. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a process of um, creating some base assets so we could, you know, uh, have a proof of concept of something we really liked and we were satisfied with. But I'd say the actual production of the game started uh, around year? 2018. Yeah, or okay. 2018, 2019. Because we are students still, mm -hmm. we don't have much time to dedicate to the project itself. So um, it's always done in our free time. Yeah, free time, exactly. Yeah. Nice. And um, basically now we're seeing Elise for the first time, the protagonist of the game. And we're already okay. seeing that she starts off uh, <laughs> complaining a lot about people who are trying to get her to do everything and everything. Did you did you have a certain intention when you started the game off uh, like this? Yeah, definitely. We wanted to set her character as, I guess, as she is. Mm -hmm. uh, always moaning and complaining about her life in Kieferberg, which leaves her uh, very frustrated and un unhappy overall. She hates her neighbors. She hates her you know, more humble life. She wants to live, you know, lavishly in a castle. So that's the kind of message we wanted to start with. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, uh, pinning that center or, I guess, a uh, characteristic of her character. Mm -hmm. So it's very clear. At least that's what we want to achieve with it. Yeah, yeah, I think you've achieved it perfectly. Uh, Twist, when I was playing it, you immediately get a feel for her character. And uh, maybe not uh, her true like character, the, the character beneath, yeah. but at least the way she presents herself. Because I like the yeah. contrast, because when you see the intro cinematic, right, you're seeing this heartfelt story, and you're seeing like she's grown up with a, with a, a, a grandmother, right, adopted grandmother. Um, yeah. But she, she, and she's very hardworking. You see, like, she help, always helps her grandmother. She gets, she plants, she, she cooks, she cleans, just like a grandmother. And then you're confronted with, like, this different aspect of her personality. So, like, in the first two or three minutes of the game, you understand that at least the main protagonist is not going to be two-dimensional, right? She shows different faces yeah. to different people. And that's very important, I think. Yeah, that's I think exactly we will be what able we want to... <laughs> <laughs> I think we will be able to see that even throughout this gameplay when uh, you get the chance to listen a little bit to her thoughts mm -hmm. and even uh, when she interacts with different characters you get different reactions from her but most of the time Elise is putting a facade <laughs> which is very easy to, to read through <laughs> Okay. 
So after after you finished Pocket Mirror, right, and you started planning this game, um, how did the development team feel at the, at the time? Like, was there any motivating emotions behind this game? Like, you wanted to tell a story that was also horror and that had beautiful visuals, but did you have any kind of emotional message or, or, or teachings that you wanted to pass on in this game? And of course, if it's spoilers, you can refuse to, to oh. answer, obviously. Well, I, guess I think we got story... to be a little reserved. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's a story about ambition, most of all. Um, most of all, like the main, I guess, thread is ambition and what that can bring you both positive and negatively. Um, so I guess the moral behind it lies, you know, beyond that, um, within that, you know, concept of all. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess we can like go much further than that, but that's kind of, you know, the gist of it. Okay, good. I, I like yeah, the detail here. Yeah, and another point I'd like to add. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you can go. Oh, here. Thanks. <laughs> the detail that... But another detail I'd like to add... Yeah, 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 yeah. Go, go, go ahead. Is that comparing to Pocket Mirror, for example, we had a very meek and uh, soft protagonist last time, and this time around we want to give the player a strong character, a strong female lead that has uh, strong emotions and strong opinions as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we are aiming for with our character release mostly. Yeah. What, what I was mentioning in attention to detail, I mean, this may not have been on purpose, but in the, how do you call it, the crossways, right? You had the yeah. signposts yeah, yeah. and the one that pointed to the correct side was uh, uh, like whole and the one that pointed to the wrong side was broken. I don't know if that was intentional, but I think that's nice attention to detail. Well, that's definitely oh, thank you. intentional, yeah. yeah. That lies with our yeah. background artist. Awesome. So did you, have you come up with a lot of different challenges in this project? I know that transferring from engine is obviously one of the biggest ones, right? Uh, you're using a completely mm -hmm. different set of tools, but more not also on the technical side, but more like on a personal side for each one of you. Like, how, how has this project challenged you and brought forth things that you didn't even know that you enjoyed or that you didn't like to do. I think we can start with, with Patricia with this one. Oh, uh, well, no pressure. No pressure. No, it's <laughs> <I'm> okay. <kidding. laughs> I guess for me, well, there's, there's always a, a, a learning curve, I guess, between projects. Definitely this time it lied more within the, um, um, the going from RPG Maker to Unity, uh, I had to learn to do a lot of stuff. I you know, didn't know how to do before. Mm -hmm. And now I have a lot more control over certain aspects. Like I'm the one controlling which expression Elite has at any given time. Nice. Uh, the dialogue, the flavor text, um, certain cutscenes. Like I'm the co-director and so is Kira. So we kind of tag team that whole direction thing. So some cutscenes are his work, some are mine. And then Pocket Mirror, it was a lot more... I wouldn't say, I don't want to say improvise, but it was a lot more what we want to do um, with this particular scene and we just discuss it and go with it. Now there's a, definitely a, a lot more uh, teamwork involved. Sometimes he can't be present, sometimes I can't be present. Yeah. So there's a, a learning curve there, like learning how to, you know, um, develop telepathic abilities, <laughs> you know, what we can and can't do, for example. But like in the writing itself, there was also a bit of a learning curve because Pocket Mirror was a lot... Um, the, the writing was just different. Uh, this time it's a lot more casual in a way. Mm -hmm. And um, not so adorned, I would say. So there's also, you know, um, a learning curve there. It's all a learning curve. <laughs> <laughs> And you, Antonio, what do you think was the most challenging aspects or the most teaching aspects of the game up until now for you? Oh, so first of all, we are not um, relying anymore on tile sets or pre-made sprites, which was the case when it came to Pocket Mirror, because uh, that's how most, most uh, RPG Maker games work, really. But this time around, everything is crafted by hand, uh, painted backgrounds in gouache paints and very detailed work when it comes to background art and character art. And for us, I think that was um, 
a very great experience overall to get to learn all these new things Unity has to to give us as developers because we didn't know any of this really. Yeah. And um, it has been a whole experience of learning really because uh, like I said before, we didn't have to worry about engines or certain aspects that uh, were given in the last engine we were using. Mm -hmm. And this time around, everything uh, enters in the game design field where we have to be very specific with all the mechanics we want to have that are not already done for us, <laughs> which was the case back then. <laughs> but yeah. this time around, it's much more complicated. Even things we, we did know that we could pull off very easily because well, they were already done for us, right? RPG Maker is all about pre-made events. So this time around, it's much more complicated in that sense. Mm -hmm. And for sure, I for sure. say that's the biggest challenge, to be able to provide as much as we could before, but much better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I must say, this, this game, uh, I, I saw it at an early stage, and now I'm seeing it uh, at, a, at a more advanced stage, and it's, it's looked, it looks absolutely gorgeous. I mean... The, the sprites are much better, you have more expressions, you have more secondary animation, you have uh, backdrops like this one where you can see like you're adding close-up detailed. I mean, there's a lot of games out there that, that have gone on to be successful in this style that don't take this kind of TLC like Time, Love & Care to like actually add details <laughs> into the scene like close-ups and... and uh, on, and shots that give you more nuance, and that's it's amazing work actually. And and you said you are only students. I didn't even know that. I thought when I looked yeah. at the game, I was like, oh, so these guys are like they're finished with college. They've already developed one or two games outside of college, <laughs> and this is like they're, they're, oh, they're trying to wish. bring it up a notch. Look, we are young. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's amazing. It's really, it's really good. I'm I'm very impressed with what the work you're doing here. Particularly Thank you. when you found Rosen Marin. The, the shot of her in the distance, like, because you can mix both art styles, right? You can see in the background the characters, right? The, the, the right. kind of pixely art. And you have the background yeah. and you have, like, HD sprites with animation on top of it. Like, it's a lot of things, but it, it actually, it looks super professional. Oh, thank you so much. What we really wanted to do with that was to, to basically mix... Uh, things that are uh, usually normal in visual novels, which are those uh, big illustrations that you just saw the moment ago, right? And uh, also uh, merge the RPG genre in it, mm -hmm. uh, where you can walk mm -hmm. around and roam around. So, in a sense, we are playing a visual novel, yes, but with added components that make it more than that. So, basically, it's an, a role-playing game, really. Yeah, it's really, really nice. So has the project since you started become more ambitious, less ambitious, or did you have like a very good take on it like initially? You already knew, okay, where we're roughly going for this and this is the project, <laughs> let's say. <laughs> yeah, that's our capital sin, is not knowing when to stop. Yeah, feature Definitely. Prequel. At first, like th this game is a, a, a prequel to Pocket Mirror, mm. and at first we were thinking like, oh, it's going to be a 15-minute game, just, you know, to tell a little story and be like, you know, uh, provide more uh, of a backstory for Pocket Mirror to, like, fill in the gaps and stuff. Yeah. Then it became actually a little story, and we started coming up with characters, and then we started coming up with the setting, and then all of a sudden we had, like, this super complex um, narrative. Uh, and then both uh, visually, musically... Uh, not only for the storyline, but like um, we explaining like shortly, we and Pocket Mirror have these theater sequences, which are like the, like the uh, opening of the game, mm -hmm. as you saw, uh, which are like you know little backstory with music and stuff, and uh, those became more ambitious as well. Like it's not it's not only illustration and music now. Now we have a ton of other stuff going on. We can spoil it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yet. But um, those became more ambitious, and even the little stuff, like uh, as you, you've seen in this conversation that we're just having right now with Jose Marin, we have these little illustrations, and um, let's just say this isn't even a third of them. Yeah. We we have a problem, <laughs> a, little, a tiny problem of not knowing when to stop. We're getting better at it, definitely, but like it's hard to manage. We're very ambitious with our creative vision, I guess. 
Yes, I mean, so, it's very important to know, like, how, what is enough, but it's also very hard to know, like, what is exactly enough, right? Yeah. Because you always right. think, it's your project, and you're always thinking, oh, but if I add this, then this expression, then I can use it in this situation, then it'll turn up this, and it, yeah, it's never-ending process. Sometimes you just have to know when to say, okay, this is amazing enough, I don't need anything else. <laughs> you know, that's the job our programmers usually do with us. We are like, yeah. oh, now actually uh, add this and let's do this. And oh, look, I did this this picture. Can you add it, please? And they're like, please, let's stop. It's, it's enough. It looks good like this. It's fine. Yeah, you need <laughs> they, they have to put with us a lot when it comes to that, because sometimes, you know, even a small picture showing up might be a problem when there's a lot of code already done around it. Right. So, yeah. That's usually when we know we need to stop, when they tell us to stop. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's yeah. what makes a good team, right? That you have some, that you have people who are willing to tell you like, no, 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 we need to stop and we need to go ahead. You need people who are grounded and you need people who, who are dreamers, let's say, who can push the yeah. project forward and say, what if we did this absolutely crazy thing? And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely the dreamers here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So as as you said before, like in that small conversation they were having uh, in the silo, you could already see like, I mean, she has no moral obligation to even look uh, Rosan Marin's way, right? But she 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 broke into her house, at least that's what she thinks she did, and she destroyed lots of things, and the, and then she was sleeping in her silo, but instead of like admonishing her and and uh, kicking her out, she actually says, "You can stay as long as you help me." So it's like you can already see some different side of Elise that is not what she appears to be. Yeah, she's soft yeah. on the inside. Exactly. All right. She's a soft girl. Unless it's about money. I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you would know better. Like exactly like this. <laughs> this this kind of uh, accent on the action is really really good. I I love it because last time I played the game I didn't had the chance to see Thank this. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So do you guys have any? stories that you would like to share from development either funny or heartfelt or sad any moment from development until now that that stood out to to each of you uh, in your memories oh if you want to hear something literally about both of us it's always like we are on a very important meeting with team where we need to get stuff done and we meet with a moment like for example that picture that you just saw and i was like no this picture is comedic it's funny and he is like no this is super serious no they are they are legit mad with each other and i'm like no it's just you know like kind of playful in a sense and she's like no that's not the tone and i'm like no that's not the tone and then we fight for an hour i'm just kidding but you know this kind of interactions happen a lot between me and Ibi. we are always uh in shock but at the same time we are always thinking with the only brain cell we have that we share in common so <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a good combo yeah. it's basically <laughs> and you patricia do you have any stories you would like to 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 share as well um, funny stories that's kind of a hard one mm -hmm. <laughs> oh i mean i guess the funniest part i guess we have like in our team is when we're beta testing and the game is still in you know super alpha stage so everything's messed up and they start having uh crazy funny bugs yeah. and issues <laughs> you break we, the game we, and, yeah we break the game we have this one specific bug we've had this one specific bug it took us a while to figure it out but basically if you uh bumped again another character's sprite it would start spinning <laughs> We could just play soccer <laughs> with the sprite and we reach this stage where we had like three of them spinning all over the screen. <laughs> and yeah, this was a straight face. <laughs> oh, nice. You get this kind of sweet commentary here. Good. Uh, how, how, how long into development would you say you're at, at, at the moment? Can you see, can you already glimpse the end of development right now? Or is it still something that's a bit far off in your, in your, in your view? That's an art. That's an yeah. art question. I'd say we are around 20 to 30% of our development. It might sound little, but I mean, it's, it's hard to quantify really, yeah. because for example, when it comes to art, like let's say 
the maps that we have so far, a lot of actions will be uh, taking place in these, right? So in that sense, we have those sets for good. But yeah. of course, there there is always room for improvement. But um, that kind of thing is hard to quantify because of what I just said. For example, these maps will have lots of days and actions being passed in them, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's a lot to do when it comes to some mechanics that we won't have and also um, some bits of secondary stories and subplot lines that we want to include. So that's definitely a lot of work ahead. Yeah. This game is about us <laughs> with all the ambition. <laughs> Sontag Sunday. Nice. Yeah. yeah actually, now, not, we were, before we were on the stream, we were talking about the, the game that was before uh, that was very similar to this, the, the Donner World experiment. And it's really funny because you, you're basing your game, right? It's a uh, very anime style. It's uh, in, a, uh, let's say, a fictional Germany, right? And it's like a right? RPG horror game. And the Donner Vault experiment is exactly the same thing. But of course, it's like a solo Oh my dev. gosh! <laughs> and it's, it's uh, more to do with like demons and it involves more like combat. So you're more on the visual, the novel, the, the, the tale. And he's much more on the mechanical side of like RPG, really. But it's funny because they share a lot of, of similarities. They were, they were two of my favorite games from the, the Indiex, the lineup that we had this year. So maybe that's something I just discovered oh. about myself. I like German <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's it. Oh, she must have taken everything I own by now. Let's check. Something tells me not quite. Oh! A few bumps over there. <laughs> yeah, Maybe not. Nobody saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did she leave? Hmm. I guess she's in the silo. Cosmarina. <laughs> no, yeah, but when you mentioned 20 to 30 percent, uh, I was also a bit surprised because there are several styles of development, right? Every dev has his style of development, but some devs prefer like vertical development, which means that they, they like mm -hmm. take slices from the game and they polish it up to like 80, 90 percent of what the game is meant to be, right? And they do this sequentially. And other devs go like 50 percent of the way, but they do the whole game, right? So they can have a picture of the game. Yeah. And then they polish everything up. So for for me, I was like, when you said 20%, I was like, oh, it looks this good and it's 20%. But I understand that maybe you, you've you polished more like a vertical oh, yeah. slice, right? Exactly. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. The, the fact that... a lot to go. Yeah. And uh, why is that? Is that because uh, our game is passed, as you can see, uh, in a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. really? So... Since it's a very sequential story, you get to finish everything in line because otherwise the, the events that come before uh, will automatically mm -hmm. tell what will happen next. So there's no need to, you know, not approach it in a, um, in a linear way, yeah. really. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're going to the village. <laughs> it's also the, the music is, I mean, people back at home probably can't hear it because it's like really uh, low. I, I put it really low so he couldn't hear below our voices, but it's also really good. The, the music is amazing. Um, did, um, did you already work with this composer in the in the Pocket Mirror? Is it the same person? Uh, oh, we are working with yeah, various okay. composers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. yeah. yeah the the person who composed the song that you were able to listen when we mm -hmm. were talking with Rosenmarin, the first time we we met her, and also the title screen, it's Yuzuki. We uh, he worked with us before in Pocket Mirror, yes. But the other songs that we are listening here are composed by two Japanese composers, Oka and Skagoshi, and they are really talented okay. as well. Like just like Yuzuki, they have their own indie um, music music labels, which are Mamiyuka, oh. and they yeah, it's very nice. We were we are super happy to be able to work with them as well as to be able to work again with Yuzuki, which has always been like such an important person setting the mood of our soundtrack and they did just that this time around. Mm -hmm. Mariana Vieira in the chat was asking me to show the menu, so I was just while we were talking, oh. I showed it. Because I had no idea <laughs> that there were menus, but unfortunately I was paying attention, so I saw the prompt to open it. And you already have like a set of like sanity, health and fullness. 
So I guess there's yeah. going to be some mechanics. Are there some mechanics that you can share with us, like the future? Oh, definitely. Yeah, there are some broad mechanics we can we can get into. I think the uh, the main mechanic is the relationship system, which pretty much boils down to uh, like as I said, uh, as we said uh, at first, Elise lives in a, a very small town. She hates her neighbors. She sometimes can't hold her tongue back uh, when talking to them. And they're not really the most, uh, you know, good-natured people. They tend <laughs> yeah. to diss her a lot and, you know, uh, get into conflict. Uh, so the player's goal here will be to keep uh, Elisa's um, reputation uh, throughout mm -hmm. pretty healthy. Because as we can see, she's housing a witch, or at least a witch-looking yeah, girl. Witch, exactly. Yeah, so she will have to simultaneously uh, look after herself and look after Rosa Marin to make sure yeah. they're not found out and to make sure, um, well, basically they don't get screwed over because the villagers are very um, superstitious and very religious and there's already word in the village that there's a witch yeah. somewhere. So... Oh, I love that running animation. Oh, <laughs> Oh, uh, so yeah, one, of the, one of the core um, mechanics, if you could uh, open up the menu, mm -hmm. we could oh, um, uh, explain it if you go on to the uh, left side okay. of the menu. Um, Let's go down, I guess. Oh, just yeah, press yeah, left. Just yeah. Yeah, left, yeah. <laughs> if you go into the, the locket menu, you can go in there. Uh, and there are two, um, I guess, meters, one for suspicion and one for reputation. So what happens is you should have suspicion uh, on the lower side yeah. and your reputation on the higher side. So, for example, if we start suspecting Elise of housing a witch or doing witchcraft herself, um, the suspicion meter will start going up. But if you have a high enough reputation, then you might have access to certain dialogue uh, choices which will save you pretty much. Okay, but if the uh, villagers already have a bad impression of Elise, it's going to be way harder to tell them, no, this isn't a witch, it's my cousin. Um, so, you know, <laughs> that sort of stuff might, ha might happen. And by the way, since you opened the uh, Rosenmarin and the other girls... Yeah, you uh, there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's a, I guess, sub-mechanic, which is nice. uh, those three girls are dateable pretty much so it's okay. in, in a way it's a traditional love oriented visual novel where you can choose to date each girl and those hearts will be eventually filled in um depending on which uh, love events you experience with each of them so you can basically choose a girl or choose all of them or do whatever <laughs> and um, <laughs> you can be a player i'm kidding no. but yeah that's what <laughs> that is for you can uh, choose a girl and you know build up your relationship with them. I am absolutely um, in love with this UI. Oh, great. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Everything is really polished. I didn't even take a look at the menus. Now, let's see. Everything is amazing. That's good. Yeah, re uh, relationship. I, I Myself, I like. I like relationships a lot in game. Uh, I love like Dragon Age Origins. I love the Witcher 3. I love the... Persona, Shin Megami Tensei, all of those games have like relationship trees. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you take any inspiration from so from those kinds of games, or is it more strictly like visual novels and other kinds of of more like uh, not um, so RPG ish RPG games? Actually, we were very inspired by the Atelier series, where you can meet other oh, characters yeah. as well, but. The romantic aspect of uh, being able to build this romantic relationship with the character was more indeed towards more of the um, of the Shin Megami Tensei and Persona series, where um, those relationships actually make something in the story. You know, it's not just like a fun little thing where you get to date a cute girl. It's more of like these relationships will be meaningful towards the endings that you might get within the story. It's that kind of thing that we would like to do. Much like Persona does, right? Mm -hmm. And even, yeah, even that's that's actually more also like RPG-ish because even Dragon Age Origins used a lot of the relationships you had in the in the final outcome, let's say, of the game. That's always, that's always good because you are connecting the player's agency to something that actually matters. 
which sometimes in games you feel a bit defrauded by when you spent the, the whole game cultivating like, no, no, I want to go after this person and develop this kind of relationship. And then sometimes you reach the end and the ending is the same as if you had done it with any other person and you feel like, oh, okay, that was a waste of time. But yeah, yeah, it's important that you that you take care of this kind of uh, player agency checklist, let's say. Yeah. And here we can see that, yeah, the, the, the village people are not exactly the nicest people out there. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> oh but that's God. definitely something we want to aim towards is the, the player's agency. Letting the player choose when they want to do stuff, what stuff they want to do at um, any given time. And uh, having those choices matter toward a certain ending. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty much what we want to do overall with the whole um, approach okay. to the game. People in the chat, don't forget, if you want to ask any questions, feel free to leave it in the chat. Today I am actually capable of looking simultaneously at the chat and at the game, so I'll be free to ask any questions you want. So we're actually going to the mass now. Yes, we are. When she, in the beginning of the game, when she talked about old hags, I was picturing like literally old hags. <laughs> now it's a, oh, I get to hear, oh, oh no, yeah. yeah, she'll be quite young. <laughs> Pretty young women, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's you know, that's... Oh. Going. <laughs> <laughs> that's still a work in progress yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah we still have a lot of sprite work to do of in course, that in that regard so rest in peace is our sprite artists <laughs> which are very talented but they will have lots of different people to draw for sure <laughs> you have lots of sprite variety just here look at this this is amazing okay. yeah you'll be able to see them later on <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah and here we have freya we have a question from Ileana Marinho. How old is Elise supposed to be in this game? And what year does Little Goody Two Shoes takes place in? Well, well, I'm not so sure about the year. Uh, we're not really going for uh, extreme yeah, absurdity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was supposed to be 17? Around that age, so like the teenager who's, you know. Unhappy, the doomer. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, she's definitely on her way to become uh, an adult, mm -hmm. and the the whole story will indicate that there will be some sort of a coming of age kind of. Mm, okay, good. Yeah, which story is coming of age? Sounds interesting. <laughs> what she's so happy about? Oh my god, the. Who who is the is there a main character designer for this game or is it like a shared oh. responsibility? That's me. <laughs> I'm the character <laughs> artist yeah, be... and the UI artist. No, because I love the little and, details um... in in the, her dress, like the the stitches in the 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 white part with the the cheeks and the the haze and the the I don't even know how you say face, but well, that I love those kind uh, of details. Spark? Like. How was it again? Thank you. Maybe it's a hoe. <laughs> I know it's not a girl, no, but... Yeah, um, I guess. Yeah. That's the let's, other one. Let's just... <laughs> that's that's sickle, isn't it? Yeah, sickle, is it? Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah it. sickle, yeah. I love the little details you Thank put you. in every little cranny. Oh, we have another question from Hannah Bermgarner. Where it is? Where it is? Do you think that you might do some updates to Pocket Mirror after Little Goody Two Shoes comes out? Oh, we always do this joke of, let's do Pocket Mirror 2, <laughs> which is basically a revamp of our last game, because we now can do various stuff, but exactly. we don't know. I think we have enough on our ends for exactly. the time being. <laughs> First try to finish Little Bit <laughs> Two Shoes, and then you think about the, the future, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Carmen Muriano is asking, when will the demo be released? Will it be released on PC or just PS4? Oh, no, it's definitely oh. on PC. Okay, on PC, good. yeah. Yeah. As for the demo, yeah. we're still debating like at which stage of completion we want uh, of the game overall. We want to like you know slice it up and make it into a, a demo. Mm -hmm. uh, but for now, since we're polishing what we have and uh, you know developing it a little bit more, maybe not you know um, soon. 
ish. That's a hard. I don't think yeah, we are going for a public demo release mm -hmm. very soon. Yeah, yet. Not very soon. Yeah. So this developer. demonstration, y'all better look at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, don't worry. The, the, if you want to look it with detail, the the VOD will be up on Rubber Chicken's uh, YouTube channel after, so you can look at like specifically and pause it and take a, a better look at at everything. Oh, nice. <laughs> Elena Marinho says, Why is Freya happy all the time? Depression at its <laughs> finest. Elise was an entire mood saying that. I didn't even notice. The writing is very funny. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quirky and, and very, very, very nice. Oh, thank you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. All oh, this music is also amazing. <laughs> Kieferberg. Let me see. Yeah, I think we have uh, more questions even. Let me see. <laughs> oh, the game is so beautiful and aesthetic. Will there be any pretty boys? <laughs> pretty boys. You'll have like cute kids, I guess. guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no boys. This is a girl's game. Girl. <laughs> I mean, if you have a niche, stick, it to, stick to it, right? That's what I say play to your strengths. <laughs> of course, it's always good to innovate and try for different things, but playing to your strengths is very important, particularly when you're a small indie team, right? And still students. So if you know yeah. how to do something, like you have a whole career in front of you to like do crazy stuff. Hopefully. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. And um, so like right now it's your big first game, I guess, even though Pocket Mirror was actually already considerable, like I, I would say. But yeah, stick to your strengths, and uh, I see it seems to be working very well. So, for now, thank you. Girls only game. Has it been long since the dear Girls only What's game. It? Yeah, that's it's something we really it's like it's to it's do. A girl-centered cast. Like all the main characters are girls. Yeah, and I mean now there's more games like that, obviously, but it's it's still not the mainstream. Let's say like for to have a full female cast so yeah it's always not enjoyable oh we have a sneaky nun over there <laughs> she's she, she, she yeah looks you like can talk with her she looks like she's spying us from over there like mm, i should not be looking hey good morning lab lab cushion okay i wish i knew how to speak german my sister knows but i'm only like i only scratch german I oh don't worry we don't know either <laughs> this is all for the aesthetic yeah <laughs> you only need to know what is necessary it's a problem Right? <laughs> Supposedly your name is spelled Liebkuchen. I'm sure yeah, I butchered it, but trema. it's fine. <laughs> I take no responsibility. <laughs> oh, nice. We have, uh, we have more questions. Uh, so they are asking if there will be extra rooms in Little Goody Two Shoes or if it hasn't been decided yet. If yes, will they be unlocked, unlocked using charms like the pumpkins in the uh, oh. pocket mirror? Yep. Yes, yep. yes. Uh, and not... there's a few items laying around within the maps that uh, we can collect one in a second. And those are called the Cedar Roses. Oh, yeah, I think we might have collected a few of them yeah. already, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. those will be essentially the charms that let you unlock secret content when you finish one of the game's playthroughs. Oh, nice. We have another question. Oh, this one is a good one. From Mike Real, mm -hmm. I guess. It's... If you had to team up with any of the characters we've seen so far in the zombie apocalypse, who would you pick? <laughs> Elise, of course. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I mean, Lev Cushion is a nun, so she might have some holy water or something of the sort. That might help. That's my thinking. <laughs> Good thinking. For as long as you keep indulging me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ah, will the demo have controller support? I mean, they, they said that the demo is still far away, so I, I guess probably we will have controller support, but... Yeah, hopefully. Sure. We want to make it as responsive as possible. Is Strange Boy considered to be a part of the main cast? These questions are already, like, with people who know everything about yeah, I, Mirror. Yeah, we know everything <laughs> about like, our mm -hmm. last game, right? <laughs> <laughs> but we'll have to wait to see. Yeah, it's, it's a surprise. <laughs> probably? Maybe. Potentially. Yeah, everyone in the chat, please tell me who would you pick from everyone to join you in the zombie apocalypse. Until now, it seems like Lab Cushion is a, a popular choice. Oh, we get pretzels, nice. I mean, who knows what she's hiding under those robes? 
<laughs> you never know, not in hands, right? Could be a machine gun or two. <laughs> that would be very in keeping with the anime style. Nans are always crazy in anime, <laughs> always. <laughs> this one is a good one. Yeah, it seems like yeah, it's very wholesome. Nice. And you're asking, where's the R of this? Yeah, it, it's well, coming, don't worry. We definitely have a secret ending in, the, in here, you know? Oh no. We might I, have yeah, I don't think we'll be able to get to it though, but... Oh, I love these uh, little transitions, like this attention to detail is amazing. Like you, you come close and then you see that there's something over there, right? And then whoop. Oh, that was a nightmare to program. Like our programmers came up, came up with this concept of a radial area fader, which yep. is like there's an invisible circle on the ground where you pass over and suddenly stuff appears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I bet it was because since it, it's not really common, right? So it must not be common for some reason because <laughs> it's not exactly <laughs> simple to do. Oh, so you're gonna play a mini game now, hmm. and after this, I must warn you that you should eat something up, or your legs might feel too not not so well and pass <laughs> <Okay>. over. The <laughs> coop use the ziki to pick the eggs. Catch the maximum amount of eggs within the time lead. Let's see how this goes. Oh, no nice. Question. Even more art. Good luck. Oh, how, how does this work? Oh, okay. So, how do I do this? Okay, I understand now. Oh, 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 I'm frozen. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. And I love also the, the, the art style switch. Thank you. <laughs> and the the, the drawings, yeah, I don't know if you can. The drawings on the side are the from the same artist that did the the cutscene introduction, right? Yeah, that would be just. Yeah. So nice. Yep, that's her. You win. Like ten tifa. Uh, that's probably money, right? Oh, oh yeah. And Ariana's yeah, money, that's uh, our currency. <laughs> that's okay. Not all okay for good reasons. Good nature. Make sure not step on their toes to keep Elisa's healthy reputation. Okay, good. Goodness me, Lisa. <laughs> so you're you're like a, a handy a handy girl, let's say, not a handy man, but a handy girl. Yeah, I'm handy girl. Nice, that's good. So health is the pleader whenever this physical damage, sanity and fullness. Okay, good. So I've got to eat something, right? Yeah, you should. If you're fullness, you should. Uh, <laughs> this here yeah. is a, he, oh, okay. Ah, yeah, yeah. You will get a visual indication. Oh my God! Everything in this game looks amazing. <laughs> So items correctly, right? Okay, good. So set the rows. So right. bread, grapes. That's it. Grapes. Yes. Oh yes. Now pretzels. Yes. And <laughs> bread. No. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see what we can do around here. Do you have any recommendations for me? Oh, oh could I the probably. Yeah, I think we, you can talk with Freya. Oh, no, Maybe. she's gone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's something that, for example, uh, in this game, uh, one of the gameplay elements is that you have to take care of what to do with your time, right? And for example, you right now missed an event with Freya where you could speak with her and eventually in the in the full version of the game, you could uh, have some choices with her and perhaps build your relationship a little bit, but you decided to work. And uh, by working, the time passes, and eventually you end up losing other stuff that you could eventually have done. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. so that also happens with exploration and also time spent with characters. So in the end, if you want to experience certain aspects of the game, you'll need to manage your resources and time in order to experience the full thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I don't know if this is... Uh, all right to ask and right now because it's still at an early stage sure. but right now the game functions on an auto save basis right oh right now it works on a no save basis sorry it's still early right we do have yeah. yeah we do have our own save states but they are really buggish and they are only for testing for the team to test right now at the moment but yeah we do not have a save system working uh for now 
Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it was just to because it's important, right? In the 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 final game. So in a game yeah. based with choices, I know because I am very OCD, so I like to keep saving whenever mm -hmm. I can. So if I mess up, I can go back and do like, oh no, maybe I should have gone that way, or maybe I should have done that thing. So like, yeah, so saves are very important in this type of game. Yeah, the save feature in our game will be uh, save point based. Mm -hmm. So mostly you'll have to be. Um, wary of where to save and when to save mm -hmm. because you never know what might be yeah, fixed coming along right. yeah okay, i think we can leave the village maybe see what's yeah up. for sure i should see that okay, today two requests okay so i just need one more request one more request okay let's look for requests this one is a little hard but we can we definitely can give you a little help we can cheat yeah we can cheat <laughs> Oh, nice. There's there's like more things here. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay, good. So maybe in the church. Let's check to see if I can. If there's anyone that wants any help. Maybe Bernhard. Hello. I cannot talk to you, Bernhard. Sorry. Looks like you can. Oh, even the um, the steps she does are, are different in the the church. That's really good sound design. Well, that would be our sound designer. His name is Robin. And got some uh, this long afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> the detail of the baptism uh, thingy, yeah, nice. The ball, yeah. Yeah, yeah well. very Portuguese, right? I don't yes. know if you noticed, but like. The little granary on the back of her home, it's also a Portuguese figueiro yeah, because we try to include some of our elements Ding in here. <laughs> so you should speak with that old lady up there. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So we can, yeah. Fancy seeing you here, Lash. Mrs. Marlon. Some water. Of course. Well, well, well. Arrow keys to navigate the riddle menu. Use the Z key to examine and or select each puppet. Okay, so what am I supposed to do here? Let's see. <laughs> oh my god, a bunch of wooden planks nailed together with feather buckets and this. Mr. Mount says we have had some information in the hurry, so I'll go back about it in one trip. Well, I'm back. Most of us have holes in them and I'll put some water on the way. Oh no. We can cheat a little if you'd like. <laughs> I mean, this, so maybe this one sorry. seems like it's. What does it say? It said, I'll be losing water on the way, I'll wait at the same rate. Oh, I lose water at the same weight. Regardless of the buckets I take, so I should take the lighter, the lighter buckets. Oh. If you if you choose them, you can you can see their little description oh, okay. because this is essentially a riddle, right? Oh, we um, it's a bit more time. of a yeah, it's a little yeah. bit of a you know a professor Layton moment here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> we will tell you the solution because this this puzzle is a, yeah, a little bit challenging. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so it's bucket number one and bucket number two. <laughs> Sorry yeah, to, no. to tell it for you, but like this, but um, might be good to so you can experience more a little bit more of the game. I think I know it. Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah. And you get to see you in yeah. again. <laughs> At a girl. She's like absolutely kind, and then the nerve of this wretch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she needs to eat something. Kids, see, there's a cute boy over there. <laughs> Items, bread, yes, bread, yes. Okay. Cool. Let's check what's happening here. Please, please. <laughs> Even more the specific sprites, nice. Gruna. Yeah, that's the little girl. Nice. She's a little pushy. Yeah. Essentially, we want to set in this first um, 
little bit of the game that we are showcasing to show the mood of the village that is actually very loving and Elise still doesn't like it so much. So she might be missing something out. <laughs> <laughs> Look, lip cushion. Hmm, <laughs> okay, okay. How many days are in this uh, vertical slice, let's say, this build? Uh, two. Okay, Pretty good. Much. So we, we actually yeah. went through most things. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Oh, for sure. We are very close to to get to the to the linear end of this demonstration. Yeah, there was a secret ending in here, but we might okay. showcase it some other time. Yeah, and I mean, you also have yeah. Patreon content to make, right? So you should keep some secrets. I oh, guess. for sure. <laughs> keep an eye on it. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> So cute. <laughs> yeah, she already knows. <laughs> okay, good. So now we're gonna go home. I expect. What is it? Let me check. Shua shua. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, mysterious path. Okay, I like the mysterious path. Let's go to mysterious path. And now we get home, and a horror ensues, or not? I guess. Oh my god, this is so beautiful. That water looks uh, like uh, Studio Ghibli water. That's what I have to say about it. Oh, thank you. Oh, this was animated okay. by one of our collaborators. His name is Atelier Gokujo on Twitter. And he does this very beautiful frame-by-frame -frame animations, as you can see. Yes. Very Ghibli-ish indeed. Oh, nice. And uh, th those people that collaborate with you, uh, are they like, are they also students, some of them, or are they already like professionals, freelancers? Oh, no. Most so of us are like our students and young people in general. Oh, um, with this girl. Which is nice, right? We get to work with people that uh, are starting yet to delve into game development mm -hmm. or starting their own careers in some sort of way. Mm -hmm. And that's great because we all can relate that much with each other. Yeah, but at least actually worked in anime in Japan, really. Nice. Yeah, some others are professionals, like the Japanese composers and um, the animators. Um, all do you know, official work. Nice. And right now we are in a love event with Rosemary, and it's the only one you get to experience in the in the game in yeah, this demonstration. In this okay. Yeah. Why don't you try to stop check your name before it is breathed? This is very 90s anime. And I'm here for it. Thank you. That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's really the look we wanted to yeah. go for. I don't know if you noticed the little grain yeah. and the little color aberration on the backgrounds mm -hmm. awesome. to make it extra nostalgic. <laughs> Yeah, I, I noticed it right in the, the, the initial menu that there's immediately that, that green. It's amazing. What is she saying? Oh my god. <laughs> I also like the um, that a lot of the UI is designed uh, with grapes in mind. It looks really nice also. That's nice. Yeah, it's Elisa's motif. <laughs> yeah, the, the, you see in the dress. Hmm. Let me see if we still have time to look at it. Okay, we're almost down. Oh, each day the new love event. Okay, be sure to make room for shows and your schedule. Hot peas. So let me see. I think maybe we can stop here, or do you want me to actually show the? No, feel free to stop wherever you want, okay. really. Because it's already. I know time. if anyone is asking something yeah, no, on I'll, the chat, maybe check the, we could... If we have some questions. Let me check some more questions. Let me check. Let's change this up for the better cams. And let's get to it. Ooh. Oh my god, I have so many comments. <laughs> oh. 
but for sure I'll take the Ooh, party. great. <laughs> Some people like Rosen, except yeah, for the zombie apocalypse. Some like Nebukushan. <laughs> Okay, some. <laughs> mm. Oh, one question from Harpei Kin. Will any of the pocket mirror girls appear in this game, such as Fleta, Harpei, Lisette, or the MC, the main character? Uh, I guess you're going to keep that close to you, right? Yeah. Yeah, That's we will of... need to not reply to that one. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah, H uh, Hannah Bumgarner was saying the same thing as I was saying. Is it meant to be more 90s than Pocket Mirror because it's a prequel? <laughs> also, like... That, that's an interesting question. Honestly, no, it wasn't well intended to be that because I, I, uh, I went through a style change and everything. But, you know, that makes sense because Pocket Mirror is set after this game and it's mm -hmm. more of a 2000 style and this one is more 90s. So yeah, yeah. kind of fits the mood, right? <laughs> okay, well, Enrique Bastu is asking... Oh, Enrique, I haven't seen you in a while. What is your favorite yeah. fact about oh, this hi. game? Hi, Enrique. Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite fact about this game you want people to know about? Uh, oh, that's a hard that's one. <laughs> What's your RZB? Uh, oh. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> me Welcome. The most safe one. <laughs> uh, a fact. Well, that's kind of hard to say. Uh, why don't you say it here so I don't stall? Okay, and... let's see, let's see. <laughs> a fact, my favorite fact about the game. I'd say that my favorite, not exactly a fact, but the thing which is also a fact, is that you need to explore in order to get uh, the more uh, or elements in the game. Mm -hmm. So you could very well get a, a nice playthrough of the game with nothing scary happening to you. Okay, some stuff might be a little bit unsettling, but yeah. nothing too dark. But if you want, you can get a very dark <laughs> uh, play good. of the game, which is like two completely different stories. Awesome. Um, that's what I like it. I like the most about it. Cody McCody asks, what have you been doing to stay sane while developing during quarantine? Tea? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Playing Animal Crossing. Oh, that's, a, that's, a good one. that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. I think we have one last one from Bort Sampson. How have your thoughts or ideas of game design evolved since Pocket Mirror? Well, 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 as we said earlier, it's um, a different challenge because uh, in Pocket Mirror, because it was RPG Maker, mm -hmm. we had a ton of, I guess, game design choices made for us. Yeah. All we had to do is, you know, get a different skin, I guess, for the menu, for, you know, the text box, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, here, we have to think about all that stuff ourselves, which is, it's, it's definitely... Um, really tricky because yeah. every, everything's intentional we can't you know hide behind the engine and be like oh unity won't let us do this yeah um so, <laughs> so yeah, this time there's no escape i guess okay so, yeah definitely yeah that's one so now instead of a question i'll probably end this stream with a, a commentary from australia akuma and she says, you're my biggest inspiration. You're like my ideal of perfection. You're the reason why I'm trying to create my own game. Sorry for my bad English. Big hugs from Italy. Oh, oh big hugs you. for you. Thank you so much for your support. Yeah, really, it like means everything to us. A pretty big following. <laughs> so, I mean, it's getting late, guys. Uh, I want to thank you a lot for, for being here with us today and everyone in the chat for participating and asking questions and putting up with everyone. And uh, yeah, it was an amazing stream for an amazing game. I wish you the best luck in the world. And uh, I, I hopefully you come to IndieX next year. And hopefully it's a physical event. That's what, that's my wish right now. Let's see. Uh, but Probably. yeah, I want to thank you a lot for, for enabling us to showcase your game. And wish you the best of luck uh, because it's, it's very, very, very promising. And you're really working hard at it. And uh, yeah, I think you have a, a very bright future ahead of you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you so much us. for that. No yeah. problem, guys. Thank you for having us. It was it's a great a time. Yeah. Anytime. You've been an amazing host, so thank, thank you, you, really. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we'll see you. We have 
more streams. We have streams, two streams every single weekday. So tomorrow we're going to have another two streams. So be sure to check out our schedule at Indie XPT. And of course, if you want to see this again, we'll be have it up in our channel in a few days. So once again, thank you, everyone, and have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye.